All right. To create your character, turn it into a symbol, and complete your character development inside the symbol, you need to do the following. First of all, you need to create the basic shape of your character. So whatever that shape is, um, you could use your, actually I'm going to recommend instead of using a paintbrush to do the shape, a pencil, but really um, you could even start with a pre-created shape and edit from there. Uh, so all right, I'm animating my potato. So I have to get the basic in, and I got a little notch in my potato. I need the bottom part. I'm not sure I'm loving this potato as much as I liked my first version, but there's a shape. Okay, and just so you can see my first version, that's my first version of potato, but I can always alter it once I'm in the edit mode. Okay, so notice when I use the selection tool to select it I clicked on it there's no f um, there's no fill in here right now so if I simply click inside nothing gets selected so since it's simply a stroke or line I click on it to select but it only selected a portion of it so I have to double click so everything is selected or I could have clicked and dragged around it now, now that it is selected, notice we're in the main timeline, which is called scene one, and we're on layer one. Let me label this layer. We're gonna call it potato, or whatever yours is called. And again, let me make sure this is selected. We're gonna convert this to a symbol before doing anything else. And I could fill it before converting it, but I can fill it once I'm in the symbol mode as well. So I right clicked with my mouse and I'm gonna go to convert to symbol. And I'm gonna call it potato. And it definitely, you could make it a graphic or a movie clip. You know what, if we always default to movie clip, you'll just be fine, we won't mess anything up. Button, it's definitely not a button. There are different characteristics in a button. So make sure you don't select that. If you stick to movie clip, things should be fine. So click create, and if you'll notice, if your library is not already open, um, mine is, but it's off screen here. So if you'll notice here in my library, you see potato and you see the thumbnail or little image of it. Let's see if I could just shrink this up a bit so it's not taking up quite so much space and bring it down. If for some reason library is not open, just go to window and click on library and it will open. Okay, so I wanna go into the edit mode. Now that there's this blue box around it with the little target in the center, I can't edit it any longer in the main timeline. So what I'm gonna do is double click on it. And if you'll notice, I'm now no longer in the scene one timeline. I'm now inside the potato. And you'll see layer one is no longer looking like uh, the label potato, which you could see in scene one. Let's go back, see layer one. Here is potato. Let's double click, go back in. Uh, now we're in layer one. I'm gonna call this body. Each separate part of your character should be created on a new layer. So if I'm gonna add eyes, I'd make a new layer, label it eye or eyes, left eye, right eye, however it is you're gonna separate. If you're going to do a texture, arms, legs, whatever features you want your character to have, create them inside this symbol edit mode. And you know you're in the symbol edit mode when you see scene one followed by the name of the symbol. In this case, mine is called potato. So again, I'm gonna exit symbol edit mode. I'm back in just scene one, which is the main timeline. When I'm done adding some uh, characteristics to my symbol, I'll add more layers. Let's just say I might do ground, or I could call it grass. Um, Maybe I'm going to do something with the sky. However many layers, and of course ground would go under. Um, sky might even go under the potato so it shows up and back. Let me just jump to the more complete file. So you can see the 
organization have here. So I have a sky in there. It's just a big blue rectangle. I added a shape that is grass. Now, when you're trying to fill an area, don't just grab a, a oops, no, let's, uh, I've, I'm on a layer that's turned off. Okay, when, if you're trying to fill an area such as this space with gra grass, don't just paint the shape and then scribble it in. That makes for, first of all, it makes it very difficult um, later on if you're going to edit, but it also makes it messy. So it's easiest if you create your shape using whatever drawing tool you're comfortable with and going back with your bucket and filling it. Nice big area of color. Anyhow, let me just get off of that and go back. And let me remove that layer I just added. So again, uh, I have a sky layer, grass layer, um, egg. We'll get back to egg in a minute. You see my character and you see I've just put a few details of grass. I didn't actually finish my sample. Maybe I will. So I thought I'm animating my potato, which you don't see the potato actually animating right now. I animated it opening and closing the mouth and the body is sort of jiggling up and down. And then I thought, oh, it should be catching something. So back here in the main timeline, I just did a frame by frame egg traveling from off stage here into the potato's mouth. So let's go back into the potato now. I've selected it. You see the blue box around it telling me it's a symbol. I can double click it or you can also um, come over to your library to get into a symbol. Okay. Now I just, uh, okay, I actually did not label my symbol egg. That's bad. You don't want just symbol, generic names like symbol. You want to actually name your symbol. So regardless, to go into the edit mode, if you don't want to double click your character or you're having trouble double clicking to get into edit mode, you can just go in the library and on the symbol right in front of your symbol name, double click and it also will take you in. I'm now in Miss Potato. I have the specific um, layers in the timeline to building Miss Potato. Okay, scene one, Miss Potato. Now, first keyframe, notice what I'm doing and then we'll go back to the one that I developed with you. That's frame one. I inserted a keyframe, which we know now duplicates exactly that art. Let me turn the eye off so it's not distracting. Um, and all I did is notice I started to open the mouth and I brought the jaw of my supposed jaw of my potato down. So I'm adjusting the shape a little. Keep in mind that one thing does not move without something else being impacted. So as the mouth, the top of the mouth starts to open up higher, of course, I lift the head up a little bit or the top of my potato. So each time I make a change, then I insert another keyframe and make another change. Insert, make another change. Insert, make another change. Okay. Once you have finished animating your character, and notice the character is not moving into any new places. It's stationary, staying in one place. It's just animated in place then figure out what else do you want in your character. Well, I wanted to have an eye. So on the first keyframe, I just did three little shapes. Uh, frame by frame, I inserted another keyframe and notice I just moved it slightly following the lead of how I changed the base shape of my character. So, okay, I've only got the first three frames of the eye, but that's pretty good for the moment. And I'm simply following the lead of how I change the shape of my potato. Okay, so back out. Let's watch it one more time. Command return. Potato is animated. The eye is animated. We see the eye moving up and down. It's not a huge animation. It's moving though, which makes it animation. And of course, the egg is flying in from the side and Miss Potato can't get enough of those eggs. All right, so let's come back over here. 
So <clears throat> we are in scene one. We've made a couple of layers and um, you don't really have to do anything with those at first. Let's just develop the character. So we're gonna double click on the potato and we have now come into the symbol edit mode. We have the body, we have a layer for the eye, which we'll go back and do. We don't need to be distracted by too many things at one time. Let's get the movements done. So F6 to add a new keyframe, or you could have right clicked and inserted a keyframe and it's duplicating exactly the previous. Um, you know what, actually, let's make life a little easier let's give it a color to start with so for me i just want to get a color in there and um well i'll go with that brown sure but i need to get my bucket and fill it and if i wanted to change the color of the stroke it doesn't have to be the color i started with i could leave it black i could brighten it i'm just going to brighten it so it's easy to see i could also come over to properties here I can change the colors over here of whatever selected. I can change the thickness. I don't think it needs to really stand out too much. We'll leave it as that. Okay, so again, we're going to F6 or right click, insert a keyframe. We've got two keyframes exactly the same. I'm gonna click off of it now. And it might be easy for easier for you in the edit mode if you zoom in on your character. And now I'm simply adjusting so I can see the stage a little bit easier and you have a little scroll bar over here or you can use the dial or scroll thing on your mouse whatever okay so the uh, stroke is almost that's interesting I have the stroke clearly no oh, look at that the stroke is so thin you really cannot see it okay I am going to adjust it just Okay, so it's up to one, not point 0.1. So again, um, let me go to one, not point 0.1. Point 0.1 is just way too tiny. Okay, all right, so now it's time for me to edit the shape. Now we've done shape editing. You can simply hover, you can uh, hover, click and drag. So let's just say I want to bring the mouth up a little here uh maybe i want to bring it down a little bit here maybe i want to bring it out just a little here so i've just changed it from here to here that might be a huge leap we're going to find out and it's looking more of a hippopotamus head than a potato this time around but you get the idea you also know at this point uh how to use your sub selection tool you simply click and you see all the anchor points that are connecting to create your shapes and you can use those handles to adjust the arc or angle so i could also click on an anchor point and move them to new location so we've got keyframe one keyframe two and you're going to continue just like we did with your morphing animations adding keyframe and making change so it's all going to depend on what the movements are in your character but your character must have movements. Once you have finished, you're doing one second of animation. And if we're working at 12 frames per second, one second means you are going to frame 12. So you're gonna have 12 key changes. When we exit back out, you can then start building on other, so if, let me clarify, if the potato is one second and it's lasting 12 seconds, all these other layers will last 12, uh, not 12 seconds, 12 frames because they're all one second. So if I want to, let's just say the sky, I'm gonna go all the way to frame 12. And this time I'm not putting a keyframe in, I'm just going to put a regular frame. If you remember, F5 is a regular frame and you could also right click and insert frame you can't create anything on a regular frame all it does is hold the artwork from the keyframe so we didn't do anything yet with the keyframe i just shut off the layer with my potato i'm just going to take uh, a rectangle you will do what works for you but i'm going to shut the stroke off 
and set whatever color you think is the sky. So for me, I'm just going to do a light turquoise or aqua. And I'm dragging a rectangle across the stage. So if you notice, for that full 12 frames or one second, I have sky. Now, let's see about the ground. Um, it could be ground, it could be grass, uh, whatever tool you want to draw with. Um, we could go with the paintbrush in this case, and I'm going to grab a green. And again, I'm just going to, and maybe it would make better sense if I had my character open so I knew exactly where I wanted my grass to go. But look at that. My ground went behind my sky. And that is because of the order of the layers. I have the sky sitting above the ground and that's why they're hiding. So you can click on a layer and simply drag to rearrange. Now I can see my ground layer. And while it's selected, I'm just gonna grab my bucket. Oh, did I go to the wrong layer? Oh yes, wrong layer selected. Okay, make sure you have the correct layer selected. Ah, keeps defaulting. So let's try locking it. And now we will simply, hopefully, use the correct layer. Oh, thank goodness. Okay. Again, if I want the ground to hold, I have to insert a frame, regular frame, to hold the artwork. So now I have got a little bit of uh, background created. And of course, we can go beyond that. Let's turn the character on now. Okay, so even though inside my, let me grab my selection tool, inside my symbol, I have multiple frames. And if I tried to move one frame, it would not necessarily move the others. When I'm out in the main timeline, since all of those frames are built into the symbol, I could simply move my symbol from one place to the other and it won't disrupt the placement in here. They all move wherever that overall symbol moves to. So again, I can hold the artwork, F5, regular frame, and what will happen is whatever or uh, whatever animation you've built into the potato or your character, you would see occurring back here in the main timeline when we make our movie. Hopefully this is helpful in getting you started. Ask questions as they come up.